Hello. Hello. Welcome back. I just realized that this game doesn't currently, it's not set to play music while it's out of focus. There we go. Um, welcome back to uh, How to Win at Slay the Spire. It's Jorbs. And we high level Slay the Spire player with thousands of hours played and many world records set at the highest difficulty of the game. And today I am going to play an Ascension Zero run with a defect uh, card pool with zero unlocks. I thought I had this time, and I checked the compendium to see which cards I don't have unlocked, so I actually know. I'm missing Rebound, Turbo, Equal... Yeah, anyway. Uh, none of these make a huge difference. It definitely changes how I should play, but... Um, I think Recycle is the most relevant of these missing cards. Anyway. Whatever, no big deal. Let's play some defect. So we played Ironclad already, got a win on Ironclad, played Silent, got a win on Silent, and now we are playing Defect. Defect is perhaps the most complex of the game's characters. I think it's been the trickiest for people to work out how to play at Ascension 20. Um, I've tended to play Defect in a fairly linear way over the last like two years or so, uh, and that is to basically make cool headed a good card and make all of the synergies having to do with cool headed good and we'll see if that plays out or not in this run you don't get offered the same things every time in slay the spire so like just because that's what i've tended to do doesn't mean that that is what i actually do every run but it would be sort of nice if uh sort of nice if i got a good strong deck like that so i could show it off i get a whale bonus of course Thank you, Whale. Let's again take 7 max HP. Someday I'll actually get a real Whale bonus, maybe. Alright, this is actually a pretty difficult turn. I think we start with dual cast, and then we double strike, and that's fine. And then we won't take damage here. Oh, we didn't even get attacked. Alright. This enemy is not allowed to use that ability twice in a row at high ascension, so I was kind of surprised, but... There you go. Floor 1 Ball Lightning is awesome. A major thing in Slay the Spire is... I think this is true for all characters. At the start of the run, damage cards are just way, way, way better than at any other time in the run. And the reason for that is that your deck is very bad, which means it improves rapidly in the direction that you choose to improve it in. And you want to be able to get through the run and fight some elites because getting relics will improve your deck rapidly, getting rare cards from the elite fights will improve your deck rapidly, stuff like that. Sorry, excuse me, I'm very burpy. <laughs> um, and you have 82 health. You have a ton of health at the start of Act 1. So in order to kill elites like Gremlin Knob, who gets stronger and stronger every time you play a skill or Lagavulin, who debuffs you over the course of the fight, or sentries who put a ton of dazes into your deck, those are the Act 1 elites, you're not going to really get there by making your block really good, or by making it so you draw tons of cards, since your cards all suck. You're going to most rapidly get there by making your damage much better. And so seeing Ball Lightning on floor 1 as defect is just awesome. That is an excellent damage card, much better than the other damage cards in my deck. And I am excited to have it. And... Yeah, it doesn't like matter super much if my HP goes down to like 30 or whatever. Like I can take 52 damage while my deck's bad at blocking because I have that much life. It's not a big deal. We can take cool headed on floor two, no problem. I'd do this at Ascension 20 as well. Um, cool headed is a good card. I would always lose six max HP here at Ascension 20. I think I will add Ascension Zero as well. Max HP is just not that important. And where it tends to be important is the boss gauntlet at the end of the run, which doesn't even exist at Ascension Zero. At Ascension Zero, you just fight one boss fight. So max HP isn't a thing that we need to have. Just some mediocre commons here. People get very attached to Claw sometimes as defects. I think the reason is that written on the card is a way to deal infinite damage. <laughs> and so it's like 
people think, oh, I need to do lots of damage, and this card says by itself how to do lots of damage. So that's cool. But you can also, like, you know, be thoughtful and combine, like, two or three other cards which are individually better than Claw already and have them scale up to deal tons of damage. Like, we can take our Ball Lightning and add a Defragment Plus, and all of a sudden that will be dealing tons of damage. Claw is sometimes good, but... Like, in general, it's just a damage common. It's not very exciting. Like of Ulan tends to be not too bad as defect. You get time to set up your orbs at the start of the fight. And on top of that, uh, when Lag of Ulan debuffs, it debuffs strength and dexterity. But orbs don't use either of those things. So our orbs will remain powerful through the entire fight. I'm going to go ahead and, you know what, actually, no, I won't cash in the Frost Orb. Between Dual Cast and Strike, I think it's Strike. It could have been Zap as well. Probably it was just Zap. Anyway, I, I don't think I played that turn right, but I don't think it matters either. So here we are in a situation where our strength and dexterity are going down, but these orbs that we have in play are still doing just as much. And that's making it not such a big deal. I am one damage short. I could use my Vulnerable Potion. I think I will go ahead and use my Vulnerable Potion. Seems like it's saving quite a lot of health here. Could have used the vulnerable version earlier in the fight as well. I don't think it would have been completely unreasonable. Let's go double ball lightning. Uh, this deck has tons of damage now. It should have enough damage to get all the way to Act 2 without too much trouble. Card remove is excellent here. With so much damage, there's no reason to worry about having strikes anymore, so we can get rid of one. So Capacitor, um, Defect often scales to win runs off of orb scaling. So getting more orb slots and getting more focus to make your orbs do more. And if you're going to win a run by doing that, you're going to have to take the cards that let you do that, with Capacitor being one of them. I think on Ascension 20, there's a pretty decent chance that I'd take Capacitor here because scaling orbs like that would be a very significant part of the way that I expected to win with Recycle being another way to like thin my deck down in the way that I did with Ironclad earlier in this series. Um, and that would be a different way to win. And then there are some other ways to win too, but like... Orb scaling, I think, is pretty important at Ascension 20 because there are so many boss fights. I'm wondering here if maybe it's not as important and I shouldn't take Capacitor. I should instead just take Focus Potion, which is weird because this is orb scaling too. But I think like Capacitor requires other orb scaling to be enough. It like, requires me to also get a Defragment or something like that. But I think with the bosses being relatively weak and no other fights in the game really um challenging you focus potion may just be enough so to clarify i'm buying that and intending to hold it uh basically until the final boss fight with the belief that i'm going to be completely fine in all the other fights just by like playing relatively decently well Centennial Puzzles, a uh, nice relic to have. Arc Alchem is a really nice relic to have as well. Arc Alchem happens to work very well with Frost Orbs. So Arc Alchem, after you end your turn without block, you gain 6 block. So I'm going to press end turn here. I'm going to gain 6 block from it, but then I also have a Frost Orb. So actually I have 8 block. Um... It would be hard to get more than six block out of Aura Calcum in any other way in the game. I can't immediately think of another way in the game that you can do that, actually. Perhaps there is one. I'm not sure what it is, though. 
Oh, there's like cloak clasp, I guess. Yeah, there are other there are other relics that can help you, I suppose. Glacier is a very, very, very powerful card. I don't actually think I need it that much here. I think I'd better take it. I think we can take one Glacier. I wouldn't take a second, though. It's very powerful. It blocks for a lot. I think it probably blocks for too much. And then I don't think I need that much block. But, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Like, what is Glacier doing for us here, exactly? Would be better to have drawn a ball lightning against Gremlin Knob, probably. Upgrading Zap, which is... Fairly normal. I tend to prefer the zap upgrade over the dual cast upgrade. Goodbye, Gremlin Knob. Probably smooth stone, ancient potion, a loop. Loop works nicely with our focus potion to bring our orbs closer to being enough to just win the run. I don't think I want this Ancient Potion. Exploding Potion is really nice for Act 2 Elites. Gambler's Brew is a very powerful redraw, basically. If you need to do something in particular one turn, like if we need to block a lot and we don't draw Glacier, we can draw toward Glacier. If we want to set up our stuff early at the start of a fight because the boss is scaling rapidly and is concerning us, we can use Gambler's Brew to draw our cards, stuff like that. Shining Light is an excellent event. Uh, two upgrades in your deck will pay for 17 health so quickly. It just like doesn't take very long at all for that to pay for itself. So I chose to go to events here. I didn't want to go to a shop because it would have broken my maw bank, uh, and I didn't have much gold anyway. And looking at the campfire hallway fight path, I just don't have very many good upgrades. I'm going to upgrade loop, and I wouldn't mind upgrading dual cast, so I would have done that. But I figured the two late act events were probably more exciting. I think how it ended up was, like, showed that that was true, um, at least this time. But I think also on average. In this situation with Arakalcum, Oddly Smooth Stone, a Glacier, a Cool Headed, uh, we're in a situation where I believe the deck is too heavily weighted toward defense right now, so I'm going to remove a defend over a strike. Just a judgment call. I find that on defect, um, it's pretty common to want to remove defends over strikes because it's pretty easy to get very good at defense with your frost orbs. This is our first time fighting Slime Boss. Slime Boss has a mechanic where when we put Slime Boss at 50% health, which is going to be 70, it will split. It will stop being one enemy and we'll start being two enemies. And then when these enemies get put at 50% health, which will be 29 here, they're going to split. They will be two enemies. So we could end up fighting four enemies at once here. Slime boss is very challenging. Um, it's a very tricky fight. It rewards you for doing lots of different things. Like at some points you want to block a lot when slime boss is attacking you for, I believe it's 38 at Ascension 20, you want to block for a ton. Other points you want to be dealing tons of damage to get a good split. By split, I mean like the turn where the enemy turns from one enemy into two enemies. You want to, like if you can have it at 40 health instead of 65 health for that turn, it's like dealing 50 damage instead of 25 damage effectively. And while it's asking you to do all these weird things, it's putting a bunch of slimes in your deck. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take creative AI. I just believe that creative AI is strong enough to win an Ascension Zero run every time from here, and I'd rather not lose. <laughs> I don't think that creative AI is like the most powerful card ever. It's very, very, very slow scaling, but I think it's fast enough for where we are in this run. 
No fourth energy in our relics, which is unfortunate. After taking creative AI, I definitely was more excited about a fourth energy than before I took creative AI. I think what I'll do here is I could take Sacred Bark and then I'd have a gain four focus in this focus potion, and that would be like enough to. I mean, I already probably have enough to win, but that would be even more. I think what I'll do instead is just take Empty Cage. Get rid of another two of the basics and just be playing our good cards far more often and that should be enough. Going to an early shop with a mall bank seems okay. Defect has very good shop only character specific relics and those tend to cost like 160-ish. So you want to have like 160-ish going to shops as defect as much as you can. If you have more, that's fine. But like, if I'm going to go to two shops a sec, I want to make sure that I have 160-ish at this shop. Maybe I just go to one shop this sec. It's probably okay. All right, let's just go to one. Because I can definitely see myself um, buying out that first store and then not having enough gold for the second one. And... I don't know. I guess I could have gone around the second one, but if I'm only if I'm likely to only want to go to one shop this act, I'd rather go to the latter one because of Mall Bank. I suppose. Loop Frost Orb weirdly turns off our Calcum, so not necessarily actually a good thing. I don't think I needed to take one damage there. But I did, and it will probably be okay, I imagine. It's a small deck, which makes Claw like kind of appealing, but I already have creative AI for limitless scaling, and I just don't have very much card draw, unfortunately, for Claw. Another thing that makes Claw appealing there is the fact that it's a zero-cost card. Which is nice in a deck that's stuck on three energy. Defect has a lot of ways to generate energy in its card pool, though, so I'm not anticipating the energy situation being too bad. Do not want to let these get away. And this one's getting away right now. So I think it's worth it to use an explosive bot to... Kill this? Do I need to? I do. Yeah. Does it even do enough? I think so. Yeah, it does. All right. I think that's my gold back. Another cool headed over cold snap plus? I think so. Uh, face trader is. The bad faces, one of them gives you weak, another one steals a relic from your next chest. So those are both pretty bad. Being weakened isn't the end of the world for this deck. I don't have many attacks that deal damage on turn one. On the other hand, I just don't have much damage on turn one. The good faces give you 50 gold when you go to question marks, which uh, is going to give me a lot of gold, but I don't really need a lot of gold. Or give you one HP at the end of every fight, which is good but also not really needed. I'm just going to take the gold immediately and go here. And I think that should be fine. Taking a little bit of damage in Act 2. I might actually have to rest. We'll see. I think the big issue here is that I... Got a fairly weak boss relic for what was going on in my run. Sometimes Empty Cage can be a very strong boss relic, but in this situation it wasn't super great and it was the best of three options. The other two were worse than it. But probably, probably it's going to be okay. I'll take a reboot for a little bit of card draw. I don't see it being incredible, but I see it being fine. Let's me play Zap lots of times, I guess. A 
lets me try to draw a loop. I don't have to play reboot if it's like not going to do anything. In that situation, I want to be able to draw loop as soon as possible. So shuffling my ball lightning and stuff like that back into my deck just doesn't really benefit me. There isn't much reason to be playing a reboot. I can... Eh, I'll actually play it now. Because we can hit Zap, which... Okay, Zap didn't do anything because of plated armor. <laughs> but uh, I think we want Glacier back in our deck is the main reason to do it there. Enemy is going to be maybe a little bit frustrating to kill with a deck with so little damage. I'm going to play creative AI for the first time and we'll expect that to get us the rest of the way through the fight. And so I'm not sure if I want to fight an elite right now or if I want to just go rest. It's certainly fine to just go rest. I do believe that I beat all the elites. I asked Coggins this fight pretty quickly. I do believe that I beat all the elites. I just, I worry a little bit about having to use a potion for an elite fight. I could actually take Streamline here, maybe. If I were to upgrade a card, it would be dual cost, and I would be pretty into upgrading dual cost. Dual cost and cool headed are both good upgrades. Upgrade one, upgrade two. Okay. I mean, that looks pretty good, actually. So maybe I'll just do that. I could take a claw still. I still have the creative AI, which does fine. Let's go with the dual cast upgrade first. And the idea here is simply that I don't have much energy, and so I want my cards to cost zero. <laughs> um, fairly simple stuff. As defect, focus is just an incredible stat. It increases the effectiveness of all of your orbs. So that's like more damage and more block out of one stat. This is great. It's not actually all of your orbs, I guess. The one that makes you energy doesn't get any better, but <laughs> either here nor there. In order to get focus, the most likely floor to get focus on is actually a shop. Shops are more likely to give you focus than any other floor. And so is Defect, going to shops with some regularity is a pretty strong way to win runs. Another creative AI. So maybe I should have gone to that shop earlier in the run. But I did get a lot more mall bank stats, which is pretty cool. So who could really say? <laughs> um, the second best way to get focus is to get floors with card rewards. So fight hallway fights, for example. So as defect, you're pretty heavily encouraged to build a deck that's good at killing hallway fights. You can't always guarantee that you're going to kill elites uh, at high ascension. They're just difficult fights, and you don't always get the stuff that's required to win them. But Beating hallway fights isn't too hard, especially Defect has some cards like Self-Repair, for example. It's very good at helping you win and sustain through hallway fights. There it is. At the end of combat, heal 7 HP. I have a 15-card deck with three cool headeds in it and two zero-cost cards and a reboot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this Abacus. I wish I had Recycle. Recycle um, exhausts a card from your hand and gives you energy equal to its cost. And Recycle starts off costing one and then upgrades to zero. 
and comboed with Abacus, that would be like very powerful because it could get me to a point where I was shuffling my deck multiple times a turn by just exhausting a ton of cards out of my deck. That's not in my card pool because I am playing without unlocks on defect. That said, I just don't have that many cards in my deck, so I'm already shuffling a ton. So let's do this. I would also like a question card. I think this is worth it just to have a lot of shots at seeing a defragment or other form of focus, which would probably be enough to win the run from here. I'm not sure about self-repair. I think I will take it. And I'll take a card remove, which is going to make my Abacus even better. I could use another damage card, probably. I'm wondering about like trading my block potion for a damage potion. I don't think I need to. Hennib is a way to deal damage, although I don't really have great attacks for it. Reboot also interacts with Abacus. I'm not sure I... I don't think I remembered to say that as I was explaining why I was taking it, but the fact that Reboot now shuffles for six off Abacus is really nice. It's a significant upgrade to the strength of that card. Can we kill one Spheric Guardian? Looks like yes. Ideally, I'd like to play more attacks here to get Penneb further around. That's fine. We got it to six, which isn't too bad. Oh, I got another Focus Potion. That's awesome. Genetic Algorithm is a very, very, very good card for Defect in High Ascension because the boss gauntlet is such a big deal. And basically every time you draw Genetic Algorithm of boss gauntlet, you're going to be getting attacked for like 20 or 30 plus. And it will just cost one and block for that much. But you do have to sacrifice a bit to get it to a point where it's blocking for enough to be a relevant card. And here in the middle of Act 2, in a run where I don't have the boss gauntlet at the end, I don't see much reason to take it, unfortunately. It's a really fun card. It's nice to see it get stronger and stronger and stronger. I am going to go ahead and take a charge battery. Because um, I think it's worth being able to play a charge battery. And having more energy next turn. Let me think about that more. I'll probably get four energy at the end of this act. I've changed my mind. Let's just skip. The advantage of skipping is that I keep Abacus going as often as possible. Sneko. Sneko's going to confuse me, making it so when I draw cards, they're randomly recosted between zero and three. I don't think I want to play any of those. And every single one of these costs two. Um, well, let's do this. Glacier is all right here. This has been a pretty gnarly run. Just not having the best time out in the spire right now, our friend the defect. This prox abacus, which will full block. But I think we're like still gonna get there. Self repair is helping us sustain through these fights. I take a hologram. The advantage of hologram is that it lets us play zap or dual cast again. I don't think I'm that excited though. I want to upgrade my other cool headed. I also wouldn't mind upgrading creative AI. If we get a chance to upgrade again. Okay, I think I'm going to have to use a focus potion in this fight, unfortunately. It's not 
like a huge loss to use a focus potion to get through slavers. Slavers is a difficult fight. Even on low ascension, this is a very dangerous fight. All right, let's do this. Play our zap, play our loop. And I think I don't want to reboot here. I'm getting ensnared, so I won't be able to use any attacks this turn. Fortunately, though, I'm starting with 8 block and then another 6 from Abacus. Also, I can deal damage without attacking with cards like Zap. Now I'm getting vulnerable. This uh, Backslaver is by far the most threatening enemy in the fight. Fortunately, it's only one turn of vulnerable at Ascension Zero. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. All right, cool. Just the one focus potion was enough there. Perhaps it wasn't even needed. But that's certainly a situation where I felt not confident in my ability to win the fight without it. And maybe if I was more used to playing at this difficulty, I wouldn't have felt that way, but the best I can do is use the information that I understand. And as I understood it, that was a dangerous spot. So I'm only on 26. I can upgrade creative AI. I can also just rest. I think the resting is correct here. I think this is going to be the first rest that we've done. If I was going to upgrade, I would probably upgrade Creative AI. But instead of upgrading Creative AI, I can just not upgrade Creative AI. And that way I can just play it for three and just tank some damage. It's like, whatever. I think playing Hello World is fine. Hello World generates a common in our hand every turn, which is kind of weird because commons aren't necessarily the best cards. Also, I want to reshuffle my deck over and over again, if you remember. Uh, that being said, though, with powers being generated in my hand every turn as well, I think it will. Just like like this steam barrier is going to help protect us as we're getting attacked for 41 here. While our deck is generating enough powers to win the fight. Like that capacitor. And it's okay to take a little bit of damage here because we're scaling pretty quickly, I think. There's a defragment. Defragment's awesome here. Barrage will kill this outright. Cool headed will channel another frost orb for me. Get to play another creative AI. I don't even know if I want that. I think it's better to. Try to get a Frost Orb in front, which I'm going to do, so I'm not going to play Zap, because I want this Frost Orb to loop. I have two turns where I'm vulnerable here, and I would rather not die during them. One turn left of debuffs. Collector is making more friends. It's fine by me. All right, and we're through the debuffs. Collector is a very strange fight where um, usually in Slay the Spire, either you're constantly getting stronger than the enemy or the enemy is getting stronger and stronger and you're the one who's like getting outscaled. But in the Collector fight, at first the Collector is usually stronger than you and then as you deploy your powers, you get stronger than Collector. But then Collector debuffs you, so Collector is stronger than you again, but then the debuffs run out, so you're stronger than Collector again. Anyway, it's like a lot. <laughs> it's a um, really interesting fight. Collector has 282 health on low ascension. That's such a random number. Why? It's a bizarre number. Do I have any relics that affect that? No. It's a very strange number for an enemy to have it, difficulty level zero. So it might look like I should kill this Torchhead, but Collector's resummoning, and if 
there are no torch heads alive, collector will summon two. If there's a torch head alive, the collector will only summon one. So as you saw, by leaving one alive, I actually denied collector's ability to summon a second one. Saved myself a lot of HP worth of torch heads to kill. I don't know if I'll be able to keep this one alive. It will quite likely just die to the lightning orbs evoking. But it looks like Collector is low enough that it shouldn't really matter. I should just be able to win this turn. Nice. All right. So we're through Act 2. The Act 2 boss can be a very scary part of the run. But that one wasn't too hard. I think this is a little bit interesting between bias cognition and electrodynamics. Bias cognition, at the start of your turn, lose one focus. That might seem like a really, really negative thing. The thing is, by the time you've lost four focus, almost every fight in the game's already run out. And also, you can use an artifact charge to block not just losing one focus, but you can actually use an artifact charge to block the entirety of this debuff. So you never get the debuff, which says at the start of your turn, lose one focus, and all you get is gain four focus from the card. So bias cognition is very, very strong. The thing is, the deck seems very weak to Reptomancer, and Electrodynamics solves the Reptomancer fight for me. So if I'm thinking about ways I can lose the run, I'm thinking largely about Reptomancer, for whom Electrodynamics is a strong counter, and not really coming up with anything else. So I think I'll just take Electrodynamics, because that seems like the thing that I need to worry about. Let's take a fourth energy now. I think Coffee Dripper is going to be completely fine with self-repair. Hilo Stone giving enemies one strength just didn't really seem necessary. And all right, uh, this is an Act 3 where I actually do feel like I should be taking the hallway fights uh, rather than just going to the faster floors. Because with question card, um, getting four looks at cards that might generate me focus is just a pretty big deal. Also, I do have self-repair, so I can heal myself in hallway fights, which is always really nice. A regen potion is pretty sweet. If I take another cool headed, this one's not upgraded, it would be my fourth. I'm okay with it. Maybe I'll get an upgrade on it somehow later. If not, and it's just an unupgraded cool headed, I think that's okay. Probably not the most exciting thing, but okay. I'm trying to hit electrodynamics as quickly as possible in this fight. Generally, electrodynamics is much better as a damage card than anything else in my deck, so I'm going to be trying to hit it everywhere. My buffer charge uh, coming in from the buffer I got from Anchoridian at the start of the fight is saving me health there. And we're through the fight. Unfortunately, Pendum's on one, which is a pretty bad number for it to be on. Aggregate's surprisingly good, even in a small deck. This deck's only 17 cards, but Aggregate's actually still maybe pickable. Um. I don't think this is a deck that likes Hologram very much. Hologram is really good if you put particularly good cards you want to play multiple times into your discard pile, but here in this deck we want to play like Loop Plus, Creative AI, and Electrodynamics, and none of those go into our discard pile. The only one that we might want to get back again is Glacier, but I think with 86 health at Ascension 0, uh, playing Glacier lots of times is not going to be necessary. All right, I'm going to take I Am Rich here which is going to give me two normalities. It's also going to give me 999 gold, and I can remove the normalities here and here. And I have an apotheosis on offer. 
Apotheosis upgrades the other cool headed. Apotheosis really doesn't do very much. I think I probably want it, but it doesn't do a ton. Purity is kind of interesting. Let's go deep breath. Um with Apotheosis, so we'll upgrade to drawing two cards. It also blocks six with Abacus, because it's a shuffle. So it's like good instincts accepted. Also draws a card and then two once I've played Apotheosis. And yeah, I'll play Apotheosis to upgrade the rest of the cards in my deck. Seems fine. I'm kind of intrigued by blind. I'm a little bit struggling to block and I would draw it often. I think I'll pass on it. It is like a little bit interesting. I don't really need secret weapon because I don't really want to find a ball lightning really fast. Like it's just not that exciting a card. Wait, cool. Century stone done. Here's a consume. Unfortunately, I do not have enough orb slots for consume to be very good. So I won't take that, I don't think. Let's take a normality. Let's take a master of strategy. Horncleat's a very good relic. I now have Horncleat and Anchor, so I'm very good at blocking in the early turns. If I wanted, I could take an Essence of Darkness, which is a very, very powerful damage potion. And that could perhaps help me. Um, I also, like, honestly, I could take Consume. I could take Consume in the other loop. And then if I play Consume twice, I get six focus. I have eight focus here, and with double loop, I'm having a Frost Orb proc five times with eight focus, so I'm generating... 50 passive block every turn. And then I could kill with like creative AI against time eater. That feels like a win, right? Feels like a win to me. Okay, I'm convinced. I will need to upgrade the consume perhaps. And then I'll leave enough gold to buy some fun stuff in that shop as well. Let's play dual cast here. It's not about the damage, it's about putting this frost orb in front so that it procs multiple times next turn. Creative AI is significantly more playable when it costs two instead of three. Here I'm okay with leaving my frost orbs in play. I'm okay with taking two for Centennial Puzzle. All right, this is the spooky part. But all I do here is consume, and then now that I have a bit of focus, all of a sudden Cool Headed starts being incredible. Look at that. And that wasn't like tons and tons and tons of focus. That was just a teensy bit of it. Uh, if I play Consume again, yeah, let's do that. So now I'm generating 50 passive, passive block every turn. And this is like the idea with Frost Orbs. You just very rapidly get to a point where you win the game from the block that you're generating. This deck is far from being the best at doing what it's doing. It's actually quite poor at it. It doesn't have much acceleration, it has very limited energy. But hey, it's good enough. I'm also choosing to end turn with a lightning orb in front, even though it's intangible for all of these zaps, which is like weird. Probably not correct. But we win next turn anyway. I could have been attacked for a lot there. I figured, like, I have regen potion. I have self repair. It doesn't really matter too much. Stone calendar may actually matter. I'll take a skim here. I think I have, like, just barely enough energy for that to be fine. Let's go ahead and use regen potion. Z 
these are going to deal some damage to me. On top of them dealing some damage to me, though, the fight's going to end very quickly, so I don't want to, like, try to save regen potion until later in the fight. We get a rare relic from this fight, so we're very happy to trade some health for that. And I don't mind that I'm not getting full value from the regen pot at all. I am glad that I put self repair and play that. Peace pipe. I can remove cards at rest sites. Okay, not a big deal. But also not like completely unusable either. Card remove normality. This would be the artifact potion to pair with the biased cog that I was offered earlier if I'd gone that route. I didn't though, which is fine. Toolbox is a very powerful relic. Having extra stuff on turn one is great. We get to choose one of three cards, so there's a decent chance we can find something that's useful for the moment we're in. I still have 440 gold. Uh, I'm probably going to go this way, so I'm never getting a chance to spend gold again. The only way I might is if I go to this event, but I'd rather go to the Elite. So, never getting a chance to spend gold again, I may as well... Just buy the relics, because why not? Panic button's not bad. I don't see much reason that I need it, though. Another self-repair isn't too bad, but again, I don't really see the reason. I just want to, like, take a fire potion. I want to make sure that I don't die to Reptomancer at the Elite fight, so I don't want to take stuff that makes it harder for me to draw Electrodynamics. Looks like I got Giant Head anyway. Against Giant Head, the important thing is going to be getting creative AI in play as quickly as possible, I think. I'd also definitely like to play Apotheosis before I play Consume. Giant Head's special thing is that when you play cards, the damage dealt to it by attacks goes up by 10% for the rest of the turn, but only by attacks, so not by... um. Like orbs, for example, or relics that deal damage. Let's do that. Next turn we play Apotheosis. This is all a little bit slow, but hopefully it will be okay. Apotheosis and a capacitor is kind of nice. Especially since I'm gaining focus with consume, so having more orb slots is great here. Giant Head scales up in damage every turn, but eventually will cap and stop gaining damage. So what I want to do here is scale up my block accordingly, and then get to a point where I'm blocking for enough every turn that I'm not taking damage anymore, which really shouldn't take very long. Reboot now also sometimes gives me energy with Sundial, which is fun. Uh, how much passive block do I have? 32 plus 24. I believe I'm already at a point where I don't take damage anymore. Just the strength of frost orbs. Maybe I shouldn't have played self repair for 7. Could have waited and played it for 10. Taken a slightly greedier choice. I believe playing this consume does make it so I'm blocking for even more every turn. I used to be blocking for less than this, basically. <laughs> um, gosh, it's tempting to just play Electrodynamics and all the bias cogs, but I don't think it's actually enough damage yet. I don't believe so. Cool. 
Now I can absolutely play biased cogs. The fight's basically over already. And I can play zap. I shouldn't have played that. Go for the eyes. Um, proccing on Chaku there was bad. I want that to be on a high number at the start of the next fight. I also should have put Sundial at two. These are just things that don't matter very much, so I'm not, not going to beat myself up over them. Let's take a Heat Sinks Plus to get my powers and play a bit faster. Let's go ahead and bottle Lightning Apotheosis. So all of the cards in my deck will be upgraded on turn one. Also quite nice that it upgrades the power generated by Nil Race Codex for me. This is an upgraded buffer. Kind of sweet. I would really like to put that Electrodynamics in play. I have a hologram in my deck, right? Or is that from Hello World? That's from Hello World. All right, we're going to have to draw back around to it. That's fine, though. I have... Oh, actually, I can reshuffle. And I have lots and lots of blocks, so it should be very doable to draw around. I would recommend against like reading too much into everything that goes on at this point in the run because, again, as with the other runs I've played, we're sort of at a point where I don't feel like I can possibly lose and I'm just kind of clicking cards. So the learning moments from this run have already happened and now we're just vibing. I'm glad to have you here and you're welcome to stick around. And maybe interesting to see how the deck completes its task. Regen potions back. I don't believe I care. Fire potions not like incredible here for any reason though. Sure, I'll take it over fire potion. Uh, the only upgrade that matters is apotheosis because I'm just going to play it first, and then everything will be upgraded. Let's go ahead and take that upgrade, and then I will remove a card from my deck at the next campfire, I guess. It's a really interesting fight, actually. Um, so this enemy gives you a debuff. Here, which deals damage to you every turn. And the fight's really interesting because you can block that debuff or remove the debuff if you have orange pellets, which is a way to remove the debuff. And if you do, the enemy just gets much, much, much easier to kill. This debuff is dealing me 10 every turn, I guess, at this level of difficulty. It will stay on you for the entire rest of the fight. And the enemy will keep on hitting you over and over and over again while it's stuck on you. If you remove it, not only is it gone, but the enemy will spend an entire turn putting it back. So you get to remove it for right now, and you get to have the enemy waste a turn um, putting it back on. You get a huge tempo boost for the fight, as well as just like not taking damage for a second. While the debuff is gone. Stone Calendar will end the fight here. Or actually, I guess everything else will end the fight here. Swift Potion I don't care about. These cards I do not care about. Just about got this one won. Let's take a Panacea, why not? That looks like a lot of damage. So we'll shuffle and give me Sundial. Deep breath for another shuffle. All right, deck's starting to work, maybe. Here's my chance to take Genetic Algorithm again. I have one fight left in the run. It's probably not at its best. <laughs> it's probably, probably not great there. Let's go ahead and Toka Strike, and against Time Eater, the plan is just to scale with Creative AI, basically. Could take another Apotheosis. 
I think I'm good. I'd actually like to skip here, honestly. I will take another Apotheosis so I can remove it from my deck. How about that? Oh, I can use it to upgrade the powers created by Creative AI. That's kind of ridiculous. That's actually kind of hilarious. I'm probably not going to do much of that, but like I can, and it's really funny that I can. I guess I should have used the Focus Potion at the start of the fight, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I already have seven focus somehow. I don't even know how. I guess I got a defrag plus off of Apotheosis at the start of the fight, huh? So the plan here is legitimately just to not do anything. Time Eater's mechanic is that every time you play 12 cards, Time Eater gains two strength. So if I just don't play any cards, except for cards that make my orb stronger, like... I'm blocking for 50 a turn right now. Now I'm blocking for 70 a turn. The fight's just completely over. There is nothing that Time Eater can possibly ever do that will deal damage to me. And all I have to do is... eventually channel one Lightning Orb, and then it will kill Time Eater. So this is just a lock. Stone Calendar has dealt some damage. Stone Calendar is like, hey, uh, you want to like help maybe? <laughs> um, I think I'm good to start dealing damage now, actually. I have a buffer charge. Just in case, but I mean, I don't imagine that will be a problem. So with Storm in play, every time I play a power, I channel a Lightning Orb, which means I have to... Try to make sure that I'm getting Frost Orbs back at the end, at the end of the turn if I want to be blocking next turn. Also, I just played this reboot for no reason other than to reset the clock so I can play more than one card this turn. Time Meter does a thing at 50% health. And again, it's on like a really weird health number. Why is it at 456? What is half of 456? 216 is less than half of 456. So when that happens, Time Eater will heal back to half health and remove any debuffs on it. In this case, there are no debuffs on it, so that's whatever. Not a big deal. I don't mind too much that it's healed back to half health. And we have a zero damage time meter fight with a couple of potions left over and three buffer charges. So GG, thanks for watching. I'm Jorbs. I stream Slay the Spire most days at twitch.tv slash Jorbs and have daily uploads on YouTube. Hope you're enjoying the How to Win at Slay the Spire series. We're through three runs now. Unsurprisingly, Ascension Zero has not been holding up super well against someone who understands the game well enough to beat it consistently at Ascension 20. But I hope that you're enjoying the runs and maybe learning a bit all the same. New character is Watcher. And uh, that'll be up next. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh, and of course, we also have unlocked the three keys. So we have that to do now. <laughs>